Okay, so this video is going to feature my recent visit at the Ion Power Group's uh, research and test facility. So Ion Power Group uh, saw one of my videos on YouTube uh, with my Atmo motor, and they contacted me and we got to uh, writing back and forth about atmospheric electricity and the uh, Atmo motor. And I found out that they had carried on the research of Dr. Oleg Jefeminko. They corresponded with him before he passed away, and then they carried on with this research here. And you can see their ion uh, collector towers. They've got these uh, four poles here. They're at about 130 feet in height. Strung between those four poles, they have a wire, so it forms a large square if you were looking down on it. And uh, connected all along that wire are, are what they call ion collectors. And we'll get into that in more detail in a minute. Okay, so Ion Power Group has been testing this technology here at this test site for about the last 10 years. And they've really been flying under the radar because, you know, I really keep my ear to the ground and, and try to connect with and understand, you know, what's going on with this type of technology because it's something I'm interested in experimenting with myself. I never heard of these guys until they contacted me and uh, wanted to test uh, the Atma motor with their setup. So I was very, very impressed with the amount of progression and progress they've made with this technology over the last 10 years. Now they want to take it to the next level. They want to test the scalability of this thing. They want to scale this up to create an actual atmospheric electricity power station. Um, they're going to try crowdfunding. They got an Indiegogo campaign going on. I told them I put a link to that in this video description. And I went ahead and made a donation to uh, their work myself. And let me tell you why. You know from following me that I'm an open source, do-it-yourself kind of guy completely through and through. You know, I share everything freely. You know, I'm not into the patents and all that. Now, these guys patent everything they're doing, etc. And I thought they were going to be really secretive when I visited. I figured they'd have stuff and they'd say, oh, we don't want you to see that or don't look here or don't do this. They were not that way at all. They were completely open and transparent with everything they were doing. They showed me everything. They encouraged replication, which is really important to me. They said, you know what, replications help verify this technology. So I really appreciate that attitude. Secondly, I want to contribute to what they're doing just because I want to see where they go with this. You know, I'm already impressed with what they've done over the last 10 years. I hope they can carry on, that they can scale this up, and, uh, you know, really test the scalability of this whole thing. So that's the reason uh, I wanted to go ahead and, and be part, you know, a small part of what they're doing. Okay, it's an established scientific fact that up in the air there are lots of particles that are electrically charged floating around up there. They're caused by any number of circumstances, but we won't go into that detail now. But the fact is, is that they are there and they are electrically charged. What we've done is we have given them a place to couple to very readily through a strip of carbon, graphite, graphene, which has millions upon millions of microscopic conductive points all over it. And uh, as anybody knows from high school uh, and college physics, electric fields tend to gather and be attracted to points, the corona effect. And so we have these collectors waving up in the air about 130 feet right now, and they harvest around 2 kilovolts night and day, Good weather, bad. Actually, during bad weather, it will spike uh, upwards of, uh, I've measured up to 250,000 volts before. But typical, it'll go up to around 30 kilovolts or 40 kilovolts. And we, we trap that in uh, capacitors, and then we can use that as usable energy. Now, what we want to do in the next phase is we want to go up to around 600 to 800 feet. So that will be constantly pulling in between 10 kilovolts through 12 kilovolts night and day. And then when it spikes, it'll, it'll go up into the hundreds of thousands of kilovolts. And that is all uh, containable energy that we can make use of to do any number of things, including make hydrogen gas from water, spin motors, uh, and eventually on a larger scale, even help power the grid. Awesome. Okay, so it sounds like the use of graphene is uh, fairly critical in the future of both atmospheric electricity harvesting as well as uh, new capacitor technologies. Um, you want to explain a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, uh, graphene is the most conductive material that man has ever created. It is going to revolutionize pretty much everything having to do with electronics and energy storage. And uh, we have filed patents worldwide for the use of graphene for ion harvesting. 
and it should give us, in my opinion, an order magnitude greater efficiency in the uh, the harvesting process. Okay, so you've got patents pending now. You're you of course um, encourage the experimentation and replication of this technology with folks like myself um, in the do-it-yourself maker type crowd, right? Absolutely. Uh, the more people that can say, yeah, I've put uh, these uh, ion collectors up in the air and have measured kilovolts off it, the more the word will get out and the more collective research will go into this and the quicker mankind can benefit from this amazing phenomenon that is proven science now. Awesome. Very good. All right. A genius named Tesla filed a patent back in, I believe it was 1901, because he noticed the phenomenon that if he put a conductor up in the air, that if he left it there, it would develop a charge. Mm -hmm. And so he filed a patent on that. Yep. And of course, uh, Tesla is responsible for the majority, at least in my opinion, of our modern technology. So the technology that we have developed is really an extension of Tesla's discovery back in 1901. Our twist and our advancement is that we have discovered that if you put up carbon graphite graphene, it increases the harvesting efficiency quite a bit. Awesome. This is the drop line coming down from the ion collectors outside. It's uh, rated at 20 kilovolt insulation. And many times, especially during peak ion periods, uh, sparks will punch through this insulation and shoot to the wooden wall <laughs> right here uh, and, and cause burn marks in the wall and smoke to come out. And so I've placed this whiteboard in the way, and that seems to help the discharge problem a little bit. Of course, the real solution is getting some uh, better wire, which uh, right. when we get a budget, I plan on doing. Awesome. So, um, as we talked earlier, you mentioned that you had corresponded with Dr. Uh, Oleg Jefaminko, and uh, basically everything he showed in his research is legit and pans out. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the doctor was way ahead of his time, decades ahead of his time, and in a way, we are picking up part of his research and advancing it forward. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> this thing's seen better mm -hmm. days. All right. This is our patented down converter. It takes high voltage energy that's developed by the ion collectors and steps it down to usable low voltage on a small scale. Uh, what we're going to do when we get a budget, we're going to improve upon it as far as larger components and whatnot so that we can handle the larger uh, volumes of energy we're bringing in now and be able to power uh, standard everyday devices like uh, computers and stereos and television sets. This is a thousand times probe, and we are now connected. It reads 8.98, which is just a smidge under 9 kilovolts. Would you turn off that light switch right behind you? Yeah, please, sir. I, it, it's not going to be yep, enough to really make fine. a visual thing, but you, you just so I'm yep. ground. This is ground. Okay. This is hot. Yep. Nice. You see it? Yep. So, I mean, that's lot. That's real time power yep. coming in. How long does it take before you get another one? Let me get up closer. So this is real time, no capacitor storage. Nice. Let me get in closer and try to catch this part. All right. This is uh, real time, no capacitors connected. Okay, so this real-time uh, power mode, as Ion Power Group calls it, is what's most interesting to me, and this is usually what I experiment with. This is where you're, you've got an aerial to the sky and the ground, and you're actually uh, showing the energy generated between those two points, and you see that here in the spark gap. This is what they call an active uh, ion day. You know, this is when the uh, atmosphere has more atmospheric electricity in it because it does vary quite a bit. In my own research, I've gone out, you know, and sometimes on a clear day, I'll get more than I'll get on a cloudy day. It varies. Um, there's kind of a baseline that you can always count on, but then it can go way up from there just depending on the atmosphere and what's going on in the atmosphere. So they had some of these clips from previous uh, active ion days. You know, the day I was there visiting with my family and kids, it was a fairly mild day, and, and as you saw in the capacitor bank, it was up at around... I think it was basically 9,000 volts. So you now it had charged up to that point. But anyway, you get an idea of watching these video clips, what it's like uh, when the sky is active. Now remember, this is at 130 feet. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like as they lift their 
aerials up to three or eight hundred feet. So, very fascinating, neat technology. The sound you hear is the pulse of the spark gap. The motor is now connected to the circuit and it spins. This demonstrates how high voltage energy harvested from naturally occurring ions in the air can power a motor in real time. white wire coming from the ceiling is connected outside to our patented ion collectors and feeds high voltage electricity harvested from ions in the air to these fluorescent bulbs. The sound you hear is the pulse of the spark gap. These 16 feet of fluorescent bulbs are being pulse illuminated by electric power harvested from naturally occurring ions in the air. So I had a great time visiting the Ion Power Group. I really ex uh, appreciate their open sharing uh, attitude with everything they're doing and uh, just had a great time and it really fit nicely with the research I've been doing. You know, I learned some things, I've got some new ideas I want to try with some of my atmospheric electricity and I've had a similar progression going from very small, you know, little tiny single piece of wire rotating to larger motor to large Atmo motor. I want to keep experimenting, I want to keep scaling up myself, but all in all it was a great trip. Uh, the family had a great time on the vacation. I had a great time visiting the uh, Ion Power Group and uh, definitely am energized and want to continue my personal exploration of atmospheric electricity. Now to end the trip, I just want to point out that I had a royal hexacopter crash. This is a great blooper here and I'll, I'll put a couple blooper clips here in the end of this video, but hang on folks. Yeah, let's all keep experimenting. Man, would you believe it? I'm going to have to quit doing this. You know, it's a pretty windy day down here. Um, the air is pretty turbulent. I don't know if it had to do with the turbulence in the air or if my battery was getting low, but I have crashed my hexacopter yet again. So I'm going to have to come up with a 3D printed uh, design with 3D printed parts so that I don't have to keep buying replacement parts for this rig. But another crash. Yeah, we're good. Hey, hold on to your hats. All right, I'm about to hook up the power source to the Atmo motor. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> I apologize. Not a problem. I'm trying to figure out what shorted. level. They want to test the scalability of this thing. They want to scale this up to create an actual atmospheric electricity power station. Um, they're going to try crowdfunding. They got an Indiegogo campaign going on. I told them I put a link to that in this video description and I went ahead and made a donation to uh, their work myself. And let me tell you why. You know from following me that I'm an open source, do-it-yourself kind of guy completely through and through. You know, I share everything freely. You know, I'm not into the patents and all that. Now, these guys patent everything they're doing, etc. And I thought they were going to be really secretive when I visited. I figured they'd have... Okay, so this video is going to feature my recent visit at the Ion Power Group's uh, research and test facility. So Ion Power Group uh, saw one of my videos on YouTube uh, with my Atmo motor, and they contacted me and we got to uh, stuff and they say, oh, we don't want you to see that or don't look here or don't do this. They were not that way at all. They were completely open and transparent with everything they were doing. They showed me everything. They encouraged replication, which is really important to me. They said, you know what? Replications help verify this technology. So I really appreciate that attitude. Secondly, I want to contribute to what they're doing just because I want to see where they go with this. You know, I'm already impressed with what they've done over the last 10 years. 
I hope they can carry on, that they can scale this up, and, uh, you know, really test the scalability of this. Okay, so Ion Power Group has been testing this technology here at this test site for about the last 10 years. And they've really been flying under the radar because, you know, I really keep my ear to the ground and, and try to connect with and understand, you know, what's going on with this type of technology because it's something I'm interested in experimenting with myself. I never heard of these guys until they contacted me and uh, wanted to test uh, the Atma motor with their setup. So I was very, very impressed with the amount of progression and progress they've made with this technology over the last 10 years. Now they want to take it to the next writing back and forth about atmospheric electricity and the uh, Atma motor. And I found out that they had carried on the research of Dr. Oleg Jefeminko. They corresponded with him before he passed away, and then they carried on with this research here. And you can see their ion uh, collector towers. They've got these uh, four poles here. They're at about 130 feet in height. Strung between those four poles, they have a wire, so it forms a large square if you were looking down on it. And uh, connected all along that wire are what they call ion collectors. And we'll get into that in more detail in a minute.